Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today's video is all about the OnePlus 7 Pro 5G. Now, why am I making a video about a phone that is so old? Because Android ROMs are pretty much non-existent for this thing and therefore there are no tutorials for flashing a ROM to this thing. And I wanted to make a video about flashing a ROM to this thing because I discovered YAAP, yet another Android open source project custom ROM on Android 14. I tried flashing this ROM earlier. I royally screwed up by not updating to Android 10 or 11 on this thing and realized I made a big mistake. So I joined their Telegram group. They are all very nice and they walked me through what my mistake was. My mistake was starting from Android 9. I need to be on at least 10 or 11, 11 being the final update, and then I'll be able to go to Android 14. So I decided why not make a video about it because there aren't any videos about it and give a shout out to the YAAP members that made this ROM possible for a phone that doesn't otherwise have any custom ROMs um, because it's the only thing I can find. So without further ado, I'm going to explain that the best way to go about this, in my opinion, is flash all the way back to stock. Um, use the MSM tool, use EDL mode, go all the way back to stock, start clean with your device. Then unlock your bootloader with the international conversion so you can get OEM unlock and uh, unlock the device. There's a tutorial for doing that on their Telegram as well as on XDA Developers where I originally found it. From there, you have to, if you use um, the newest version, you won't have to do system updates. It'll go straight to... Android 11.0.9.1, which is the OOS version, the Oxygen OS version. There is no way to locally load a uh, OTA update on the OnePlus, which is really stupid. So I'm having to do the update OTA to get to 10 and then go to 11. You can apparently do uh, YAAP over Android 10, but... I'm probably going to go to 11 just to be safe. They say for sure, you know, they recommend going to 11.0.9.1 before doing the Android 14. So I'm going to let this update finish and then I'll come back with a new screen recording of the phone. And this tutorial does assume that you've already f switched over to the international version where you can OEM unlock your device and flash custom ROMs. There are tutorials, like I said, on... XDA, so follow those if you need to. So apparently my phone won't update any further than 10, so this is just where we have to get started. Now we are going to first try something that nobody gave me really instructions on is do I fast boot boot this boot.img or do I fast boot flash this boot? So we're going to ADB reboot bootloader. My bootloader is already unlocked. This is going to close in a second. There it goes. And I'm going to go for the vanilla version of this because I don't like using Google Apps anyway. I don't need them. I use Micro G or and like Aurora Store and stuff like that. But I really wanted to give Android 14 a chance because I don't want to update my daily driver phone to it since there are a lot of 32-bit applications I enjoy. Uh, whether it's like old versions of games or like CSR1 or something like that. There's a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, old apps I enjoy. So, fast boot. Do people still say YOLO? Fast boot, flash boot, boot. All right, and then I'm going to go to recovery mode in the menu on the device. And we'll see if it boots to the Android 14 YAAP recovery. It does. So we're going to go apply update from ADB. And we're going to do ADB side load vanilla 14. We're going to hit enter. And we're going to see if this flashes. I don't believe it's going to work to ADB side load magisk. I believe we have to patch the boot.img if you want to root. At least earlier when I was trying this, it didn't work. So 
We'll try the Magisk Flash in YAAP recovery, but I don't believe it's going to work, and we might have to just flash the boot.img. But when this is done, I'll come back. All right, so one thing I like to do after ADB sideloading a custom ROM is rebooting recovery, because sometimes the recovery partition or the recovery changes thanks to there potentially being a boot.img inside the actual ROM.zip. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And that'll also tell me if the flashing of the ROM worked at all. Because now we're gonna try to flash the magisk.zip. Now you can get magisk from the official GitHub release page. Uh, it's gonna be magisk v whatever version .apk. All you have to do is just rename it to .zip and it'll flash like the really old days of Magisk just flashing. So ADB side load. And it did reboot recovery successfully, which it did not do for me earlier because it tried to come from Android 9. I rebooted. I didn't go all the way down to update with ADB by accident. Okay, it went back to recovery at least. Apply update with ADB. Now let's see if it takes it. I don't know if it will. It did not. It gives an error and doesn't ask if I want to do it or not, which means we need to change this back to APK and sideload it, uh, APK install it with patching the boot.img that they provide after we boot into Android at least once. So let me find out if Android 14 boots on this phone and we'll go from there. Uh, it's boot looping. I did see something about alternating slots. Oh, I didn't factory reset. You need to factory data reset after flashing this ROM because Android 14 is different. Uh, as far as the data encryption partition or the data partition, the encryption is a little bit different from, you know, previous Android versions. A lot of the times when you're changing full versions, like going from 12 to 13, you have to format the data partition, factory data reset. I see a YAAP boot logo that looks very similar to the Android AOSP boot logo. <laughs> the way the animation is done, it looks exactly like AOSP, which is understandable. It's literally yet another open source project. So makes sense. But it booted. I'm in. Uh, let's see if I can screen record. I don't know if I can. Because USB debugging is probably not enabled yet. It is not. So I'm going to go through setup real fast. I don't need to connect to Wi-Fi. I'm not putting anything in it. I'm not doing location services. Skip, skip, skip. Done. Wow, I like that wallpaper. You'll see it in a second, I promise. I gotta go tap my build number a bunch of times here and go to developer options and enable USB debugging. There we go, look at this. <coughs> it actually looks really nice. This thing has eight gigs of RAM. I totally forgot that. What a chunky amount of RAM for the day. Huh. Thick. All right. That's the wallpaper I was talking about. This is sweet. I like it. Honestly, Android 14 doesn't look that bad. Oh, this is micro G already. That's awesome. Already has F Droid, so I can easily get Aurora Store. Has Chromium, which is fine. It's going to be a Chromium that I believe is compiled with the ROM, so it's a little bit different than like having Chrome if you're using degoogled stuff. I'll still download Firefox for mobile just because it's what I'm used to. But we are going to ADB install Magisk. <clears throat> and then ADB push boot.img to SD card. And we're going to open Magisk. We are going to not allow, because I don't care about notifications. We're going to patch. We are going to go here, select the boot image, patch to file. This should work. Now, I've seen some tricks with Android 13 on newer devices, like the Surface Duo, that uh, people didn't actually ADB pull. Um, crap, here, let me do that. CMD. This way it pulls it here. 
I'm too lazy to change it. ADB pull, uh, SD card, download, Magisk patched. You son of a monkey. Patched dash two six four zero zero underscore G E Y Z D dot I M G. And there's our patched boot image. So ADB reboot recovery, uh, fast boot, bootloader, whatever you want to call it. So something that I've learned recently is a lot of people are not fast boot flash boot when it comes to the Magisk patched IMG because some devices have issues with it or some Android versions have issues with it. So we are going to tether uh, our root on this device and we're going to go fast boot boot magisk.patched and then when it asks about setting it up in the app anyway once android boots we're going to open up the magisk app we're going to connect to wi-fi and we're going to allow it to manually patch while the device is powered on in a full android state and it's going to actually root the uh i believe the storage block um i forget exactly what they're called i think they're called blocks uh for come on unlock thank you i need to connect to the internet i am not going to let you know what my passwords are i am notorious for leaking my passwords by the way it's been a very long time now thankfully connect here we go so i'm going to open you son of a biscuit i am going to open the screen recorder what we're going to do is Magisk. And I sideloaded the root. Now, what we need to do is click OK. It should still be rooted when we reboot. If it's not, we just ADB reboot bootloader, fast boot boot again. And then we do uh, like flash directly, um, patch directly, or whatever it's called, brain farting but I'll be back with you when that's done. So kind of like I figured I'm not rooted anymore. So what we're going to do is just ADB reboot, recovery, or not recovery, fast boot, God dang it. Bootloader, ADB reboot bootloader. From recovery, we can get to the bootloader, so it's fine. Or I can just hold down volume down at the moment, I believe, and it'll go straight to the bootloader. Nope. It will not go straight to the bootloader if I hold volume down and then try to interrupt it. But I can force it to bootloader, just re reboot to bootloader if you accidentally make that mistake. Not a big deal in the menu. So fast boot, boot, magisk. And from here, we'll be able to open magisk.app uh, and just have it direct flash. And then I'll set this thing up with my patched Spotify. Pandora, um, why do I use both? I don't know. Uh, revanced YouTube, add away for the entire system uh, with systemless host, uh, Game Guardian, and probably CSR3 to see how it does on a slightly older phone. Please don't ask me to set it up again. Good, 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 good. So, you need to be able to see now. There we go. So, install. As you can see, I am rooted, but I didn't flash it. So I'm still going to go install, direct install. Do not do install to inactive slot unless you absolutely just ran a system OTA. I made that mistake on my Surface Duo, and it is destroyed. If anybody has made it this far in the video and knows how to undo the damage I did to my inactive slot, please let me know. I don't have touch anymore. I don't have anything. So uh, it was an accident. I clicked it by accident. wasn't paying attention. But as you can see, it is flashing it now. Well, yeah, like I said, the block. So it's doing it now. It's going through. I might try a 32-bit app just to see what happens. And reboot. And now we will be untethered rooted. Does it seem like an unnecessary step? Yeah. But... Some people have said there have been issues after flashing the boot, so take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But 
I might switch back to this phone now. I'll miss 5G speeds, but honestly, I barely do anything that requires 5G speeds. I'm on Wi-Fi all the time, so I'm not entirely worried about 5G, and it would be nice to have a fresh phone again. And now that it can be my favorite Android phone I've ever owned, which is the OnePlus 7 Pro 5G, without 5G, I don't know, strange. I can actually use this phone again. I'm exceptionally excited. So we are officially rooted. I'm going to go Magisk. The first thing to enable on any Magisk is systemless host. And then do the safety net fix. And from there, just set it up how you want to set it up. And you're good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little adventure of rooting and putting a custom ROM finally nearly two years later after I got this phone on my favorite Android phone almost my favorite Android phone ever if you ever wanted to know my top three Android phones my favorite phone ever was the Essential PH1 second favorite was the Note 10 uh, plus 5G with the Zenio CPU um, because I put lineage on it and that thing was just amazing and then OnePlus 7 Pro 5G, OnePlus 8T I really like. And can't think of um, what would my next one be. Probably the OnePlus, or the uh, Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus I have in my desk drawers. That is uh, rooted and rommed. So I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.